Howdy, y'all. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of my Mr. Nightmare Marathon. And today, I'm back in my stitched up scarecrow attire. Because the next story I'll be reacting to is three disturbing true farm horror stories. So without further ado, I'm going to turn the lights back off. And let's get this reaction on the road. Cheryl and I own a farm in Buckingham, Iowa, where we mainly grow corn. This was in August of 2018, on a slightly rainy night. Cheryl and I have both spent our entire lives in the farm life. It's really all we know. Of course, farm life in Iowa means lots of space and very few people. Oh, I bet. <laughs> our closest neighbors, George and Kenny, were each about half a mile away in opposite directions, also farmers. With not much else going on around here, it's easy to become friends with your neighbors. We often have George and Kenny and their wives over and vice versa. On this one otherwise normal weekend night, we had George and his wife over for drinks. We all got pretty drunk while playing board games. They left around 11. Luckily, it's a 30 second straight line of a drive home. We continued to drink some wine as we watched one of our favorite movies. We were starting to get tired. We were definitely feeling the effects of the wine. We were most likely just going to fall asleep on the couch cuddled up together when there was a knock at the front door. A knock at the door at this hour was unusual. Yeah, that is In fact, unusual. it never happened before. But accompanied with the knocks, we thought we could hear a voice say something. I lowered the volume of the TV. We waited for it to happen again. Like 20 seconds later, another set of knocks at the door, followed by a muffled voice saying, we need help. I was about to get up and open the door when Cheryl shook my arm. And I looked at her, and she made a face and shook her head no. I whispered, I'm just going to ask who it is. She replied, I shouldn't let them know we're home, but odds are they already knew we were home. I went over to the door and asked, who is it? The voice on the other side said through the door, oh, thank God, can you open up? We're lost. I said, who's we? The voice said back, my wife and I. I replied, can your wife say something? There was a silence for a few seconds. I followed it up with, did you hear me? The same voice said back, yeah, but she's not next to me right now. This is where red flag yeah, started going that's off. that's a red flag right there. And I started to realize the voice sounded a little off, like a man trying to make his voice sound a little higher. I laughed and said, George, is that you? George is a big goof, and him being drunk, it wouldn't be unheard of for him to do something like this. The voice said back, yeah, in a slightly deeper voice now. I almost felt relief, believing that it was actually George, but I didn't want to open the door just yet before confirming. Having someone knock on your door out here late at night claiming to be lost doesn't happen. It's not a thing, and it's an immediate cause for alarm. I said through the door, prove it, what's your wife's name? A now unfamiliar voice said back, that's a trick question. My smile disappeared. I went to get my phone and called George. Cheryl was watching the whole thing, telling me we should call the police. I said, hold on. The yeah, phone rang the like three times before George picked up. Right away, I said, are you at my front door right now? And he said, no, why? I told him there's someone at our front door trying to trick me into opening it. He said he'll hurry right over, and we hung up. Keep in mind, all of us were still drunk during this. There were knocks again at the door. I yelled, I have a shotgun waiting for you if you don't leave here now. The voice said back, we're just trying to use a phone, that's all we need. Cheryl called 911, which out here, it takes an extremely long time for an officer to arrive on scene. We heard footsteps walking around our wooden deck that wraps around the house. A couple sets of footsteps, actually. They stopped at one of our windows, which had the blinds closed, and we heard one of them attempting to lift the window open. This caused Cheryl, who was still on the phone with 911, to scream, leave us alone. I followed suit and screamed at the top of my lungs to get the fuck out of here or I'll shoot you. It took me that long to think to run upstairs to grab my shotgun from the closet. We should have heard it right A few hand. seconds later, there were more pounds at the door, and this time it was actually George's voice yelling, open up. I let George in, who also brought his shotgun. He said he didn't see anything or anyone as he pulled up. He stayed with us until a police officer came to the house. He did a quick little scan of the property with us, then left. 
We took heed of his advice in installing a camera on the front and back. Surprisingly something we never thought of until this incident. You should have Still gives already. me chills that all that was keeping out whoever was on our front deck that night was a wooden door. First of all, you should have already had a camera out there in like a ring system or something. And two, if the guy says, um, that's hard to explain about the wife question, then he's not your friend. Tell him to go ahead and get off the property. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know what happened to that dude. I, he probably wants to seen his friend coming up with a shotgun. He just bolted <laughs> before the cops even showed up, too. So I'm going to turn the camera back around. Let's get ready for story number two. This story takes place at my grandparents' farm in the summer of 2018. I was alone one night since my grandparents were away. I was getting paid to watch the farm for a couple nights. On the last night, I was watching TV in the living room, when I started to hear a strange noise coming from outside in the cornfield. At first, I shrugged it off because I figured it was most likely a deer. That was until I heard all the cows start mooing at the same time. Usually, you would hear maybe one cow moo at a time, but when every single cow starts mooing, then something is wrong. Something or someone would have to startle them to make all the cows freak out like that. Yeah, I was the only one at the farm, her. so it was, of course, my job to see what was going on. So I went to the closet to get a coat on and go outside. But just as I was about to go outside, I heard a very high-pitched cow scream. I stood still for a while, shaking in my boots. Something terribly wrong was going on with the cows. I quickly ran upstairs to my grandpa's room. Under his bed, he always keeps a few guns. I loaded his hunting rifle and went outside. The cows still would not stop moving. So I went into the barn to check. There was nothing out of the ordinary. All the cows were still here. That was until I walked further down and noticed that one cow was missing from his stall. It didn't make sense. I was sure he was tied up to the stall the last time I saw him. What, did somebody steal and the I cow? I thought I could hear a cow make a high-pitched moo sound from the cornfield outside the barn. So I went outside, but while I was walking to the field, I swear I heard what sounded like people talking. Yeah. I finally had enough of this. I fired two rounds into the air. Everything went silent. The cows were quiet, and I couldn't hear anything from the field. That was until I heard the footsteps in the field. I didn't know if I had the balls to go inside the cornfield, but I had to do it anyway. This is the exact reason farmers have guns, and I couldn't just hide inside the house with trespassers in the field. I started to walk into the crops, and I could hear many pairs of footsteps all beside me. I was getting even more freaked out as I continued to walk deeper into the field, and then I froze. What? Down one of the rows of corn, there was a person in all black standing a few feet away from me. I rose my gun up, telling him to get out of my field. I wasn't bluffing, I was ready to shoot. But he never moved. So I fired another round into the air to scare him off. But he still didn't move an inch. Then he actually started walking towards me with his arms slightly out, as if telling me to lower my weapon. I aimed my gun at him again, I screaming at him weapon. to go away. And that's when I made the horrible realization that I was surrounded by people dressed in dark clothing. Like at least six or seven other people. What is that? That was only the people I could see. Who knows if there were more. What do you mean to tell me that there were cattle hustlers? Or something? But Yeah, but that one guy wants to be all big bad. He don't want to run away in fear. He wants to show you he ain't bluffing. He'll attack you. And as the one guy got closer, I realized something. He, along with the rest, were all wearing these creepy masks. The man stopped approaching me as I started stepping backwards. They all stood in silence for a moment. I cannot explain the fear that I was experiencing. I thought I was about to be killed. That was when they all started chanting something. I couldn't understand it. It sounded like a different language, but the chants almost sounded like a song. And I started wondering if they were about to perform some kind of sick ritual on me. I hope not. That was when I took the opportunity to run as fast as I could down a few rows of corn. When I was out of breath, I stopped and fired about six rounds in their direction. I heard a bunch of footsteps and rustling crops going in the opposite direction. I finally scared them off. I ran back towards the direction of the farmhouse and stopped. I saw something on the ground. And what I saw has stuck with me, scarred me. There was a cow head sitting in the middle of a circle of candles. I wanted to yak, 
and as soon as I got back to the farmhouse, I did. I grabbed the house phone and called the police. I told the operator everything to the best of my ability. She said that an officer would be there soon. After I got off the phone with the police, I called my parents explaining the situation and asked them to come pick me up. My dad said he'd be there in an hour. I sat upstairs in my grandpa's room, shaking and crying at the same time, waiting for what felt like an eternity, until I finally heard a police car outside. I ran outside to the officer and never felt happier in my life. I told everything to the officer. He searched the barn and then a little bit of the cornfield, and he found the cow head. He called up a search team after that, as this was now an active crime scene. When my parents arrived, I, along with the first officer, had a talk with them about everything that happened. Thankfully, my parents took me home after that. My grandparents took this very seriously, of course, and installed a high-tech security camera system all over the farm. Who knows what kind of group that was. But clearly they were doing some kind of animal sacrifice ritual or well, it something. seems like they were. I just happened to be the unlucky one home alone on the farm they chose to do it at. Yeah, there's got to be a lot of sickos out there that want to do all that ritual stuff. <laughs> uh, out of all the farms you had to pick his, <laughs> I would be acting too if I saw a cow head. Ugh. But I'm glad his parents came up there and took him home and the... Uh, officers did a search team i said i'm glad they're doing all that i hope they did get them guys they'll be sickening to hear that they're still out there somewhere huh. or maybe an entire cult you never know my name is howard i'm 25 years old and i live on my family's farm well, i love to live I in a place like that when my parents are out of town it's just a little family farm, not a commercial farm or anything like that. My parents want me to take it over when they're too old to take care of it anymore, as I'm the oldest of three and the only son. But honestly, I don't really want to. I don't see myself staying in the middle of Arkansas my whole life, and especially not after something really weird that happened only last July. My parents were on a romantic trip for a week, and so it was my two sisters, Crystal and Morgan, and I taking care of the property while they were gone. There's not much around here. Lots of privacy and such. A little too much, in my opinion. Except for this one night. It started later on in the night, as it was hey, approaching like time to go to bed. My sisters do college online. Crystal takes summer courses, and so she was in her room on her laptop doing work. Morgan and I were just hanging out watching some dumb show in the living room. All three of us kind of want to get out of the farm lifestyle. Me especially, since I'm oldest and in the prime of my 20s. One dreaded part of farm life is the predators, though. Not just the animals that come and eat your produce, but the people that come and steal from you. Believe it or not, it happens. It hasn't happened many times to us, but it does happen. We have a few guns in the house for this exact reason. Our two dogs outside suddenly started going crazy in the backyard. Something spooked them for sure. I first thing went outside to the yard to see what they were barking at. They both were looking in the direction of the crops, going crazy. I yelled at them to shut up, and they went quiet. I stepped right in front of the crops and listened. I heard a whistling from inside of the cornfield. It was undoubtedly a human's whistling. This was the first time I was experiencing a trespasser on the property with my dad not here. I had to hurry inside to get one of the guns. The dogs started barking again. I told my sisters that someone's outside in the cornfield and I had to go chase them away. They both said that was a terrible idea to go run into the cornfield. Yeah, in the it dark. is a terrible idea. And they knocked some sense into me when I realized they were right. I also realized how downright terrifying that would be. So instead, I went out back to the dogs once more going crazy, barking in the direction of the crops. I aimed the gun into the air and fired off a shot which echoed into the night, silencing the dogs. I also was on some kind of power trip in the moment and screamed out to get off our land as loud as I could. I felt that would have done the trick and went back inside. My sisters were both laughing, which caused me to laugh too, but our little laugh amongst each other didn't last long because the dogs started going crazy again, even crazier this time. I went back outside, ready to do the same thing again, but I felt my heart skip a beat when I saw the guy standing about 20 feet from the dogs, right in front of the cornfield. He looked at me, and I screamed, hey, at which point he ran into the cornfield. I started running over and fired another shot into the air. I stopped by the dogs. There was no chance in hell I was going in there. I wasn't about to leave the I dogs out either. here either. 
I unclamped their chains from the hooks and brought them inside the house. I told my sister someone was sneaking around in the cornfield. So what did we do? We called our dad. He told me I had to be the man of the house and protect my sisters. He recommended I fire another warning shot outside if whoever it was came back. After this, we all just gradually went to our respective rooms. My sisters each brought one of the dogs in their rooms, and I brought the gun in my room, just because we were all a little spooked by this. I had the window open, and as I was laying in bed watching a movie on my laptop, I heard a whistling from outside. I hurried oh, to the window back. and looked out to see someone slowly walking the grass. Then, like he had some sixth sense, he stopped walking and turned to look at my window, still whistling. This jerk was obviously trying to mess with us and scare us. A very stupid idea when I already made it clear I had a gun. I ran to grab the gun off the bed and aimed it out the window. I shot at the grass a few feet away from him, purposely missing, of course. This cut his little horror movie act short, and he ran out of view of my window towards the front of the house. Uh-oh. This time he didn't come back. He'd have to be a fool to come back after that. I obviously told my sisters why I shot, and I assured them he would not be coming back. We never found out who it was or why. Why did you not call the cops? some teen or multiple teens just trying to scare some innocent farmers for fun. Or it could have been an actually dangerous person. Well, I certainly don't see it being funny. <laughs> uh, I don't know what they get out of just whistling and uh, staring up farmers just so they can shoot at them or get the dogs barking. But no, they must have had sinister intentions. But then every time he fired the gun at them, it'd be like, no, they ain't coming back. But I don't know why they didn't call the cops. They just called their dad, <laughs> which is fine. But... I would have called him and the cops just so they can go chase after them guys. Or if they saw the lights, they'll be running. <laughs> but anyway, that's going to be it for now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on those post notifications for more Mr. Nightmare content like this. This has been another successful storm of the Tin Man's Corner Channel. I'm your host, Jeffrey Tin Man Taylor, the Scarecrow. <laughs> and have a nice day, everybody. And be safe on those farms. <laughs>